actually it's not 20 games of the season uh there's only about 18 uh games left in the season for some teams and 19 for others i think i, I looked at that this morning so i remember saying wow that's you know that's like six series basically you know and uh for a lot of the teams they're looking at their last home series of the year coming up pretty soon so you're getting to that time of year where you know you're thinking okay you know you, you better win your home games because if you're going on the road like the Mets do at the end of the season that makes it a little bit tougher oh totally I, I think you're at the point in the season where oh, I mean you can start talking about awards at this point and I think at some point we're going to start having to talk about the award debate in the National League between Francisco Lindor and Shohei Otani for MVP because I think that's certainly a discussion that can be had at this point but is that a Met fan thing? I, I, I say, are we so like Met? Fo- I mean, obviously, we're Met focused because we are Mets, Mets focused. But you know, we know how great a season Shohei has had. And we've said before in this podcast, if he were pitching this season and doing what he's doing with the bat, mm-hmm. wouldn't it be a conversation? Uh, I don't even know it would be possible to do that. By the way, um, and so you know, is is the fact that he doesn't play the field enough that allows Lindor in the conversation because he does it all? I think in this case, yes, I think it has to be part of the conversation because it's such a big deal. Lindor is not just any, he's not just a a shortstop. He's a very good shortstop. And I think that's such a big part of the reason why the Mets are in contention, why the Mets are doing so well and why, you know, he, he has a chance at winning the MVP over a guy like Otani because I think that is Otani's easy biggest weakness is very clearly the fact that, you know, well, he's not playing the field. And yes, he's doing amazingly offensively, but he's not able to impact the game on the other side of the ball. The fact that Francisco Lindor has caught him in war, depending on which calculations you use, shows that the fact that, yes, while he's putting up an absolutely historic season offensively, He's not doing it d- defensively because he well. just doesn't play the position. Now, again, this changes all. This has to terrify anybody that's in the NL because we're having this debate in a year where he's not pitching. If he's pitching, it doesn't even really matter what he does. He's MVP. Well, I'd argue, though, that you couldn't hit like he's hitting and pitch at the same time. I think it would be – too. I mean, he, the, the, one of the reasons he's been able to do this with you, the, is because he's solely focused on hitting. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I always look at the, the conversations that people have about MVPs going, where would their team be without him? Well, the, the thing is it's the same. Right. If the Dodgers didn't have Otani, they would not be the Dodgers and be in first place. He carried that team when Mookie was hurt Mm -hmm. and Freddie was still doing it. But they were all the pitching injuries. Oh, Shohei was there when they really needed him the most, and we forget about that because it was you know a couple oh, of uh, months ago. Uh, a little uh, bit. Right, right, we forget about and, you and know. Lindor has picked the Mets up on his back since his terrible start, and he's carried them. Where would they be without him? They wouldn't be in it either. So those kind of cancel each other out in my mind in a way. I, I think that's a fair way of looking at it in terms of canceling. I, I just also think that. You could argue that the carry job that Lindor is doing is much bigger than the job that, you know, Betts, I mean, uh, uh, Otani is doing because he doesn't have guys on his team like Freeman and Betts. I, and that's that's a good argument. And then the whole now, granted, thing, Betts has missed a ton of time. Right, this right, year. right. And, and Freddie's just had a normal, you know, really good season instead of an amazing season. I mean, it's. Oh, it's, totally. You know, it's not that it's a bad season. It's just not the greatest season he's ever had. But, you know, the whole thing on, on both their parts, right? Lindor is trying to get to 30 30. And that would be he'd be a, a guy who's done that only uh, what a f- the fourth time I think he's done that, mm-hmm. um, and he's now got thirty home runs for the fifth time in his career as a shortstop. Only a Rod has more seasons like that, uh, so that's something. But the thirty thirty thing for Lindor, he's sh- about I think two shy or three shy of stolen bases to get to thirty, and and if Shohei gets to fifty fifty, it's like well if Shohei gets to fifty fifty, we give it to him. Right, like, he I, just I, wins. I, I I don't know why that would be. You know, I mean if he deserves it, because nobody else has ever done that like yeah. that's such like like we, we talked about we talk about 40 40 being special that, about how not that many people manage a 40 40 season yep. and here's Shohei about to do 50 50 and we're not going to say that's an MVP no, no, year it is it is it's it, gonna it, win it is. and Shohei's gonna win the MVP I Even mean if he we, doesn't we can talk there. about that he's gonna win it anyway I mean we, we can say what we want as Mets fans trying to make an argument for this so or it, it's at least fun if it's an argument and I think that's where we kind of are now that we're in this sort of latter half run of the year because you know we don't have a lot of time left on the season and for some teams that means jockeying for playoff position becomes very stressful like the baltimore orioles who lost again today to the tampa bay rays they lost two out of three and of the then rays. you have teams that you know like the boston red sox who went while getting swept by the new york mets this week might have saw their window on having oh, a I playoff so. run kind of close when that happened and now 
They're at 500, and they're just thinking, okay, we don't want to finish last in the division because the Blue Jays are right there. And the you know the Orioles and the Yankees have kind of been bumping along, but they had big enough leads, you know, that they they're not threatened by any way, you know, by any other team. And and because of the wild card, you can relax. You know, you'll be playing differently. And the, the Yankees, I think, and the Orioles to a degree, they're searching for a closer because is it bullpens being what you know what the key thing is in the playoffs. Uh, Clay Holmes has blown 11 saves for the Yankees, and I think he's finally like lost his job and they're going to go by committee right now as, as what I think Aaron Boone said which just means that you know I think Luis Heel may come out of the starting rotation and, and maybe go to the bullpen and be a closer that would be a hell of a switch from a guy who I can't imagine you'd have a lot of confidence in his innings right. and, and I mean I guess that would do they're it searching. They, don't, they don't have anybody they have confidence in putting at the end of games and, and that will be the ultimate thing that takes the Yankees down by the way if, if they you know they're, they're a good enough hitting team to, mm-hmm. to, to get although Judge has had a bad stretch of 11 games I think he's batting 175. Been cursed since he was on Paw Patrol. Yes. <laughs> him, and, him and Soto have not hit well since that that episode debut, just for those that are hip to it. And and so Bobby Witt Jr. continues to play well for the Royals. And boy, you know, they lost five in a row, and then they came back, and, and they've won, what, three or four in a row. And they have a two-game lead on the Twins now in, right. in, in, in the Central, still trailing the Guardians. But Bobby Witt now is gaining on Aaron Judge. And if Aaron Judge doesn't do anything else the rest of September, and the Yankees drop to the wild card, and the Royals win the wild card, or even better than that, does Bobby Witt win the MVP in the AL? Does he come out of you know from behind and, and beat Aaron Judge? I, I think you could make the argument I if they get the too. wild card spot and the Yankees, especially if the Yankees slip and sort of get the at first wild card spot by default, and the Orioles you know kind of over this last twenty games just pull away. Then yeah, I could see Bobby Witt getting the MVP at that point. I, I think so too, and and you know, I it, it should just be acknowledged how good a season Witt's been having. We've talked about it on the podcast a few times, but these are like legendary numbers he's having this year. We you know, with the ops being around a thousand, you know, hitting the you know the home runs and stolen bases and and fielding you know his position all at the top levels in the American League. Mm-hmm. And I do think it is interesting because we were. We, we, about partway through the year when we were looking at the American League, we were sort of talking about how amazing it was in comparison to the National League. Yet, if you look at them right now, the National League actually looks a lot more impressive than the American League. And I think it's really Good interesting point. going because there's no teams that really stand out above the rest as being complete or elite. I think you can look at every team in baseball and point out at least one pretty sizable flaw on that roster, if not multiple, uh, at least among you. all the playoff contenders. So I think it's going to really come down to this postseason being somebody's going to get into that first round and be hot. And it's not the kind of thing that like carries over. So being hot right now, 20 games outside the playoffs. Like the Mets just were? Right, that doesn't have, but, but you know what? That's <laughs> far enough away. I, to what I'm talking about is going on a run to get into the playoffs tends to not carry over. We don't see teams well, the getting. Well, the Phillies did it when they won the wild card and went to the World Series two years ago. Right, but it's it's rough to go get hot in the two weeks leading up to the wild card. When your way in there and then keep that up all the way through there's i think there's too much of a letdown especially if you're a team that was charging to get in like let's say the mariners go on a wild run because <laughs> oh, I, I have to look at this though because if i'm going to say if there's a world where i say okay well the mariners and the tigers have an outside chance at a wild card spot they're only a couple games behind the twins outside is being nice Outs- they're four snowballs chances closer four it games- is still uh, just september here right so. four games back with about 20 to play the twins could totally collapse and and that spot they're, they're a little little shaky. They're a little shaky, so that spot could come into play. That's about the only spot that really I think has a chance. So you and it kind of relies on the Twins stumbling because even if you play great, you'd have to play so crazy great to catch them just on playing better that you're probably. But you're that's what you're kind of looking at. So. I just think it's interesting that nobody's likely to get that hot going into the postseason to make it. But let's say you do, you're going to have a letdown then when you make the postseason. If the Mariners go wild, they go 20, you know, 18 and two and they make the postseason. They're going to have that sort of mental letdown after that because the mission was accomplished. And then you you just don't see a lot of teams that make that kind of run and then play great. I think there's maybe I'm wrong and maybe we need to look into that. I might buy a little truth in, in that, but I think what happens more often is that you've had to use all your stud pitchers in order to make that run into the playoffs and so lining them up for the playoffs now the other team that's already sort of been there ha- c- 
can sort of set their rotation. And they've watched you leave everything out there over the last two weeks. They know what you've got. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I do think it, it matters as to how you get in there. And sometimes the momentum can carry over. And But uh, sometimes you can have that run a little too early. And I, and the Mets have j- just won nine in a row. They lost today. You know, I, I worry a little bit like, oh, there it was. Well, so you know 20 games too early. <laughs> 20 games to go. You're playing a not great Toronto Blue Jay team going forward. That's a series you hope to win, and then you've got a bunch of pl- you have got a really tough schedule going down the stretch. But you were always gonna, so you were always gonna have to play well down the stretch to get in anyway. You got ten games. That if you're uh, last thing on the Mets here, so they got ten games. I think they've got uh, four in Philly. Um, or three or four in Philly and Atlanta and at, to end the season in Milwaukee. All you can hope is that the Brewers are so far ahead that they pitch three guys named Ed you know, mm-hmm. uh, in, in the last games of the series because they don't need them. It doesn't affect their playoff position at all, and they don't want to burn any pitchers. And so that might – but they also will have the choice at that point to say, let's see, if the Mets are the who, wild who card do team, we want to play? who do we want to play, right? So and, and that's and, – and there's still so much that the, the Diamondbacks and the Mets, I think, were tied in the loss column uh, starting today. Uh, they played tonight, the Diamondbacks, so Sunday night game against Houston um, and then the the Padres still have a game in the loss game so this is so tight you don't know well, right. and, where we are and, and the Padres continue to be, to be powered by likely National League rookie of the year I think at this point Jackson Merrill just because as good as a guy like Jackson Churio has been as good as Paul Skeens has been Merrill has been a maybe the biggest reason why I think the Padres have been able to kind of put themselves well, into and an survive almost, the loss of Tatis right and put themselves into an almost Yankees like position where oh well they're or an AL East runner up position where it's like well that's the first wild card like there doesn't really look like there's a world where in which the Padres don't get a wild card well, I would disagree point. with you there I, I, I they would really could because they would have I to think they, they you know they're they're not that far ahead that you know they got one, they're one game lead on the Diamondbacks and the Mets but they're, and, they're, and they're the Braves two games. Or two well, games. now in the now they're, column, right? now they're the two Mets games but, but the reason I say that is it would require all three teams below them to all keep playing well and the Padres to start playing badly for them not to get a p- playoff spot. That seems like the least likely option of them. Ma- you know like, what I mean? Like we said last week, like one of those teams, right? The Mets, the Diamondbacks, the Padres, the Somebody's going to go 8 going to tank out. Somebody's going to go 8-12 and 12 over these last 20 right, games. Right, right. That's that's what it is. And, and I was I was looking today because I and then, oh, it's, it's 2024. That's 60 years ago. And, and the Philly fans, they're going to hate me for this. Uh, then I'm going to do this, right? Right. So going into play today, had the Mets won, they of course they lost. They would have only been six games behind the Braves, two or six or five or six games. So could the Phillies, with a 19 games to go, lose a six-game lead and, and not only lose the division, but maybe get out of the wild card? Probably not. Almost definitely not. But both it's of those, happened before. It has happened before. <laughs> and, and, but when it happened in 1964, and the Phillies lost a, um, a six-and-a-half game lead with 12 to play. Like one of the worst you know, things ever. And the Phillies fans, can, it, it, that's just a horrible thing. Now, the Mets were known as chokers when they choked to the Phillies in 2007 and 2008. Um, but the Phillies, also in, in the COVID season of, of 2020, they, uh, they had to go two and six in their final eight games to make the postseason. The Phillies went one and seven. They they didn't make it. They went in 2018. Um, they were two games behind Atlanta in September, and they went eight and 28 to finish the season. Yeesh. So, so they can do it too. Right, but there's I mean, no reason to think they're suddenly no, no. Like, like that. They're playing well right now. But don't they you didn't... think if you're a Philly fan, going, oh no, it couldn't happen no, again? Uh, maybe if you're like your age, like <laughs> like that's the thing. I think anybody that's not, uh, you that, know... it's hard. You wear that 64 Phillies thing if you're a Philly fan. I don't care what age you are because it's like the, the no, I'm going to tell you. No, no, I'm going to tell you right now. If you weren't alive in 19. 19- 1964. You you're care. not thinking yeah. about 1964. Yeah. Well, it, it's not going to happen in any way. But it, it was kind of interesting to look at the Phillies and say, "Wow, you know, they 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 had such a big lead, and it's getting smaller." But the thing is, the teams behind them aren't good enough to overtake them or playing well enough. I don't right. Think. And I think it also helps that Kyle Schwarber has apparently forgotten that it's not uh, you know June anymore because he's crushed the ball this week. He's like five home runs this week. Yeah, three in one game on right, Tuesday. Right. And, and him and he he is really helped. And I think guys like him, guys like Gunnar Henderson, who's had an unbelievable 
unbelievable week and really another unbelievable season for the Orioles yeah. for the Orioles have really helped power both of their teams when b- guys on their teams have I think uh, we would argue have had disappointing seasons I think JT Real Muto offensively has not had the year right the the Phillies would have hoped I, yeah I think yeah but he's still Adley Rutschman has not offensively had the year the Orioles would have hoped. but when the playoffs start you know you're gonna be I, I want Real Muto those be, kinds of guys yeah, in your lineup. yeah I want that guy back there I love Real Muto and I think a guy that. that's had an underrated season because he did he started off so slowly because I think he was hurt was uh Eugenio Suarez has really come on and had put together a pretty you know fantastic season for himself considering how limited he was and I really like that that signing when when they brought him in I thought that was a great under the radar signing and I and I thought Eduardo Rodriguez was a great signing who just hasn't been healthy enough to really help the team right. the, the, the Diamondbacks biggest issue is Kettle Marte's injury yeah Kettle yeah. Marte's injury because if he's out and he misses these last 20 games true. of the season especially with Christian Walker still out they might just miss and it might be the kind of thing going okay you know what we had our best players get hurt down the stretch. Gabby Moreno hasn't played that many games this year. And when you're not having Marte, Walker, uh, and Moreno in the lineup like that, it's going to be really hard for a team that I think most people, even after their World Series run, would say was not the strongest offensive yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, I, agreed. Um, when you mentioned the rookie of the national, uh, rookie of the year in the National League candidates, you uh, conspicuously left out Shota Imanaga, and you, I know that you don't feel that a guy who pitched for and, and there's a lot of people who agree with you by on this that because he pitched so many years in Japan, this is not a rookie, you know, anymore, and he shouldn't even be considered. Well, Imanaga had had a really good. Pitch uh, start this week. In fact, he was part of a combined no hitter uh, that the Cubs mm-hmm. threw, um, and and so one of the things that you know fans just uh, they really have a problem calling these things no hitters. They are no hitters, but they're not you know uh, a pitcher's owned no hitter. So I started thinking about you know more, I wrote an article about bunting this week, and we know that bunting to break up a no hitter is, is a no no is a, a no no. But is it okay to bunt to break up a combined no hitter? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yes, I say. <laughs> I honestly, and I even think that it depends on who's bunting for the hit. Because if Ichiro is up and he bunts for a base hit, I don't think anybody has the right to complain against that because that's something he would normally do. But if Pete Alonso gets up in a no hitter and the first baseman and the third baseman are standing, you know, gigantically far back, and he randomly decides to drop down a bunt to break up the no hitter. Yeah, I take a little bit more offense to that because not a, not a combined no hitter. But I'm in a combined no hitter. I would go, okay, come on, Pete. I, I, I just flick my, 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 come on, not a combined. You don't get to have any like on a, on a regular no hitter. Uh, situationally, if it's a close regular game, no hitter, you can do it. regular no hitter, just as long as that. the guy is somebody that I would at least could make the argument that bunting for a no hit. Uh, a bunt Something for a hit would be part of his game. Like Nimmo could do it. Lindor could do it. JD Martinez better not be dropping down no buns <laughs> to break up a no hitter. So um, you know, I, I heard this this week uh, about a, a game in uh, the Tigers were uh, were down in San Diego on, on Thursday, uh, and they rallied in the top of the ninth because uh, Parker Meadows of the Tigers hit a grand slam with two outs. And two strikes. The team was down three nothing in the ninth inning, and that's like. And, and I think Steve Phillips said it on, on the leadoff spot. It's like that's like in your backyard. Oh yeah, that's the, the, the wiffle ball backyard right. game. You're like going, okay, bottom of the situation. Nine. <laughs> Bases loaded, two outs, no two pitch. The, can you three yeah, down? It's a grand nine. slam. It's uh, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's like a kid. I'm moment. sure I've done that many times in video games as well. <laughs> um, I got into a little trouble this week because I I put out. I started thinking about uh, you know how well Vlad Guerrero played you know, the second half of the season and we talked about the Pete Alonso free agency um, and I thought well you know they both played first base and so let me look at their careers next to one another well surprisingly they played about the same amount of games very close 824 for Pete at the time 798 so you know close um, they have about the same war for their careers um, Pete has more home runs Vlad has a higher average and so on and so forth I won't go through the whole litany but you know they're comparable players except for age <laughs> right Vlad's going to be 24 going on 26 next year Pete is going to be 30 so I said gee you know if I were the Mets I might really think that my team is b- better benefiting by having a guy like Guerrero there than Alonzo and, and, and they should consider signing Vlad Jr. if they could as a free agent uh, well it turns out I didn't read the fine print and that uh, Vlad doesn't have a contract for next year that's true except that he's arbitration eligible so that'll almost certainly lock him up for one more season before he hits what'll likely be be an open market if he goes that far and the blue jays are talking about they're trying this. right right but now, my- the issue for them is is that he wanted an extension and he wasn't playing well they didn't give him one now he's back to playing so well 
everybody's like, well, I wouldn't mind having uh, Vlad Guerrero I, I, Jr. I think, I think when it comes to money, though, you're going to, you know, ignore that stuff. If they if they sing the right tunes, numbers wise. Right, right. But that's what they, the, the, the tune they're going to have to sing, it just went up in price because he's back to being the type of guy that you go, well, he's hitting 320 with 28 homers, and he still plays – Pretty yes, he won a Gold Glove his for I think his rookie season. That was he's not that good a no, defender. I, that's a phantom Gold. That's glove. a phantom Gold <laughs> Glove. But he's a he's as long as he's willing to try out there and he's locked in, he's a pretty good defender. And so as a complete package, who's younger than Pete Alonso? Yeah, I would not mind. You know, maybe you run an experiment seeing can Vientos hold down the fort next year at first base. And then if that doesn't work, you're like, okay, Vlad Guerrero Jr., 26 year old, come on down. You know, if, if you're the Blue Jays, uh, there's there's an argument to me that they need to change the mojo there, right, and blow it up. It's not – whatever they're doing isn't – and I wouldn't say that that means getting rid of, of, of Vlad is the thing to do because he's such a great player. But you could make an argument that we need to change things. Could could the Mets put together a package to trade with the Blue Jays, not sign Pete, give them all kinds of prospects and sign this guy and, 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 and because he, the, the Blue Jays then lower their risk? Well, I, I think that's not a bad move, if the especially if this year's free agent market isn't the type that can allow the Blue Jays to reload very quickly, which I don't know if it is. Like, you have guys like an aging George Springer on your roster who, yes, right. he's been great, but like he's hitting 220 this year. And he's 34, when 35, you, you know. You know when you look at your outfield and you look at the guys that have played the majority of your games, it's Springer, Dalton Varsho, and Davis Schneider, who has not been as good as he was last year. He's hitting sub 200 and played 119 games. So I think that makes it really tough. And like, when you're most of your out fielders are bad hitters you might look at that now as the Mets what are you gonna have to give up to get them oh a ton of prospects and, I, 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 and they may not you know, I don't think they necessarily will do that because there's other things they could do but I'm just saying that player is good enough that maybe there's something out there it, it won't happen as I think probably will happen is the Blue Jays will resign right and Vlad I think Vlad Jr. wants to be in Toronto and wants to be in Canada and 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 we'll we'll see if the Mets want to sign Pete Alonso after the season. Uh, he's not having the, so far. I think the September that we kind of hope he's he not would having to the September Pete Alonso was hoping for. Right, right. It would have been you know really helpful for him to do that. So uh, you know this week, um, I, I don't think there's there's you know too too many series that are going to be determining who's going to make it or not because we still got a little too much time. I think at this point you're now just paying attention to every series any wild card team is pe- playing in. So if you're the Mets. Royals at the Yankees this week. Right. That's a big you're, you're, series. But as the Mets, you're watching any Braves game. You're watching any D-backs and Padres games. Any team that's like in that group, you're paying attention to. The Cubs and all those teams that are looking around 500, yeah, you're know. kind of ignoring them unless one of yeah, them starts playing those. their way into you know your they, world. They have to do too much with 18 games when they're – I think those teams are like four – games behind the Mets the Padres and the Diamondbacks you know Mm -hmm. that that means you got to go like you know uh, 16 and uh, 2 or something like that in order to really unless somebody goes in the tank so uh, yeah I think um, that the the Royals of the Yankees series is probably you know one of the the good ones Seattle um, will be entertaining the Padres Uh, that should be interestingly from the standpoint of can the Padres bats be kept quiet by Seattle who I guess still has a snowball's chance of getting the wild card but I don't think they really do